Hey, that's great. Well, it's nice to see y'all. Uh, welcome. And I maybe have a few Zoom members online. All right. Well, welcome to the guys on uh, or the guys and girls on Zoom. Um, January announcements. Okay. 2023 annual renewal dues. Let me start right out with it. We've started a new year. We got renewal dues is now due. Um, the payments can be made through the website. I saw an email go out from Kevin today that had a link on it. If you wanted to click on that, um, and a quick thank you to all the members that have already paid. I know that we've got, I think over, over a third, nearly a half of us have already, uh, re-upped again so thank you for all that's done that um uh remember to help support the club by participating in the dollar sweepstakes i think probably around refreshment time you'll see i'm going to grab mike again yeah my okay so we're going tonight for a highland uh, woodworking, fine tools, and education gift certificate for bandsaw blade. bandsaw blade. Okay, another bandsaw blade. Always oh, useful. You can get a new bandsaw blade. So a dollar to get a ticket, and then we'll draw um, at the end of refreshments. Okay, so hit Mike up if, you, if you'd like to get in for a bandsaw blade and uh, help support our club that way. It's a, it's kind of taken the, the place of the raffle for right now, or the, not the raffle for, from the, what did we, what, what did what we used to have? What would they call that? The silent auction. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so it's taken the place of the silent auction and it's not a raffle. It's the dollar sweepstakes. Uh, Member mentors are um, available if you're new to turning or looking for help. So there's a list of a couple of people that will jump in and give you some starters if you'd like. So I, I um, take advantage of that. If you if you want to get started right, that'd be the way to do it. I'm also always interested in anybody that would like to get on the member mentors list. If you'd like to be a mentor to help out uh help people through projects or help people that are just getting started. Um, let me know and I'll get you on the list. We'll talk about what it entails and it doesn't entail much other than showing up and being friendly <laughs> and being a little bit safe. Uh, first open shop cleanup of the year is going to be Saturday, February 4th, starting at 10 AM. So if you use the shop, make plans to help, uh, the more, the faster it goes, that's a big advantage to have, Lots of people there. January announcements. So oh, let's see. Anthony and Sean are still mentoring some uh, students at the Liberty High School Wood Turning Club. And uh, I'm hoping that maybe one of these days we'll see some of those uh, students in, in, in the shop turning. I have a mistake here on my uh, notes. It says next month's demonstration. It's actually March, the March demonstration. Um, will be uh, from a tight bond adhesive uh, rep and will include sample giveaways. So make sure you're there. <laughs> Everybody likes to get samples. Um, I will be coordinating a Zoom meeting of the shop opener sometime soon. I'm going to shoot out an email that'll uh, be a Zoom meeting. Probably you can call in if you need to, but it's just kind of... Um, Really, just to make sure everybody's still still engaged, We're, we got all everybody's commitment, and find out where we've got holes in backup names and things like that. So it's uh, going to be pretty informal, but I thought maybe necessary. I don't know that we've done that for quite some time. Um, locating information on uh, for for the club, the best place is the website kcwoodturners.org. Um, the column on the left has all the pertinent information and then there's also calendars and member information as well as well as some nice photos and uh projects and things so and then the wood chips monthly newsletter sean tries to get out some current events and things that are out there happening so that's someplace good or literally ask any of the board members um and we'll see if we can't get you information if you're if you're looking for something specific uh the club still needs some help we got, um, our club is uh, looking for demonstrators. 
um, or demonstration ideas, if you have those or would consider something that you could demonstrate for the club, see Mike Thomas. We've, we've got pretty much the first half of the year covered. We're looking for some people for the back half of the year. So um, we need a few additional shop openers. Uh, Anthony and I are covering the first, first and fourth Wednesdays, but we'd like to have a uh, have somebody else to put in that slot. And we also uh, need some backup of primary openers. Probably after the meeting, I'll have a little bit more or better information specific to what days we need those. But uh, if you'd like to consider being a shop opener, which just means a commitment, usually once a month or so to, to show up, open the door, um, turn on the dust collectors, minimal things, and then close it afterwards. Um, looking for members to assist with the AV at monthly meetings, uh, camera work and backup for Rob so that if Rob's ever sick or has to take a vacation or something, uh, we have somebody that knows what's going on. So if anybody has an interest or, or thinks that that's something that they'd, uh, like to get a little bit more familiar with, talk to Rob and I'm sure he can show you through it. Uh, Phil's assisting us tonight with some, uh, camera work like he has in the past. That's always helpful. Um, would you consider being a KCWT men member mentor? We would like to grow our list. See me if you would. And uh, on any of these subjects, uh, talk to a board member if you think there's anything that you can help out with. We appreciate that. Let's see, upcoming events. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll be demonstrating, our club will be demonstrating at the Urban Woodsman event. February 18th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Susan B. Gorman, is that, Ed, is that right? Uh, Discovery Center is is where it's at. Um, it's fun. Uh, it, not only the wood turners, but you wander around and see all the different outdoor activity things that they've got, as well as uh, taste different syrups and things that they make. Uh, they, I think they cooked a beaver one year. So uh, I don't know if that's happening this year or not. I don't want to get anybody's hopes up, so I won't mention that. <laughs> um, Anthony says he's going to be offering a box making class and a bowl making class in early 2023. We'll probably have the date set up by uh, next month when next month's meeting. Um, and then just a quick up to upcoming meeting demonstrations. February will be work holding strategies for the lathe. Um, by Dave Bartlett. So different ways to mount your projects onto the lathe and, and, and safely uh, hold them while you're working on them. Um, March is going to be our successful use of tight bond adhesives with Bob Minky. And April is going to be an, a laser graving techniques uh, demonstration by our very own Kevin Neely. So those are some things to look forward to that are coming up here soon. Given that, uh, we're ready now. Phil's got a double time here for uh, Phil's safety minute. So Phil is is our new safety guy, and he's going to bring up subjects randomly from uh, month to month to kind of remind us of things that we need to think of during the meetings while we're turning. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. This is a pretty random month because it's January, and uh, it's cold outside. Well, not too cold. Uh, and but I love the uh, the the January light, the way it comes into the shop and shows you how much dust is in your shop. If you have a window, how many of you have a window in your shop? Okay, if you don't, I'm sorry that you don't get that pleasure. But um, I do want you guys to check your shops for dust uh, over the winter here. And how many of you have a dust collector or overhead filter clearing your shop on a regular basis? When was the last time you cleaned your filters? Anyone in the past month? Okay. All right. That's pretty good. Six months. Has anyone never cleaned those filters? No. Um, it is pretty, pretty easy to do. It takes a few minutes in the winter on a nice warmer day. Like we've had like today, it's a great day to do it, uh, to take them outside. Don't do it in your shop. Uh, and if you need some suggestions on how to clean those filters, um, ask me or ask somebody else, uh, what the best way might be to do that. I did that in my shop and, uh, my filters run a lot better now. The other thing I want to recommend that you guys do how many of you wear a dust mask while you are working? Sometimes, all the time, never. Sanding. 
Uh, e even when you're not sanding, especially if you're working with dry wood, it's a good idea to, sorry, this bag is tricking me up. It's a good idea to uh, have some kind of a dust mask on. It doesn't need to be, I mean, this is ideally what you would wear, something like this, a uh, N95 rated respirator situation with filters and stuff. Um, something like this um, is a great idea. But honestly, I, I don't wear that all the time. What I usually wear is one of these because I bought a box of 100 of them, you know, two and a half years ago or whatever, and I'm still running through them. Um, but these are great because they are, you know, especially if you're not doing like intensive sanding, they're not very intrusive, but they are great at blocking the majority of dust that's in the air there. So I recommend you have something, whether it's something as simple as this, as inexpensive as this, something like this, which is fairly popular. Um, you don't have to be Glenn Lucas and have a full face mask and everything with a power pack and whatnot. Um, but please take care of your lungs um, because uh, you only have one set and uh, you don't want to wear those out too early. So there we go. Hey, thank you, Phil. Um, somebody told me, I think it was Rich one time, and maybe maybe it was Bill Paul, um, told me that it goes in, but it doesn't come out. <laughs> so you only got, I, I imagine, so much intake before you fill up, right? <laughs> okay, so tonight's demonstration is going to be on crack filling techniques by Don Frank. Don has been doing taxidermy for how many years, Don? 40 plus. 40 plus and he has figured out all the little tricks and and, and tr uh, different things you can do to, to make those end products look as uh, realistic and perfect as possible. So without further ado, Don Frank. her into that and uh and she said well what kind of dessert do you want and uh i just looked at her i didn't say anything and we've been married 47 years so she knew exactly what kind of dessert i wanted and uh i tried to get her to make it on uh thanksgiving and she didn't and tried to get her to make it on christmas and i didn't so i did weasel this little way in and i went ahead and cut my piece first to make sure that i do have one over here because there's more people here than what I was anticipating. So anyway, uh, as Chris mentioned, my uh, background is I was full-time tax dermist for 42 years. I just retired this last year. And um, there, what's that? No. I did. I actually, I'm not taking work in. So I am, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I am officially hundred percent done. So, so anyway, I'll have a lot more time to, uh, uh, to turn wood, and uh, I have a sawmill also, and we'll be playing with that. But there's um, there's several things we've all used on for crack filling, CA glue we've all used before, uh, wood glue and sawdust mixed together we've all used before. I'm not going to talk about either one of those because uh, we've all tried it and, uh, and you still use it sometimes. There's some uh, specific... Um, epoxies that are used within the taxidermy industry that I'm sure probably none of you have ever had a chance to use. And they they work extremely well for filling wood. And, um, and they're a lot easier than a lot of other ways there are to fill big gaps in places. Um, there's, I'm gonna start this off by passing around a few things to try and get ahead of the curve a little bit. Um, and there's, uh, on this particular piece, the bottom section was filled and this section was filled. This one hasn't been filled and that hasn't been filled. Just to give you an idea of how big these cracks were and stuff. These haven't been sanded and they may have, they may require a little bit of extra filling on it, but it'll give you kind of an idea of how, um, of how the, the look of, these uh, epoxies work. The, the one epoxy is 
uh, strictly opaque colors. Uh, the other one has a slight uh, amber translucent to it, so it lends itself to doing a turquoise type look. Um, I don't know if that'll come down from above. We got an overhead. And I'll, I'll pass these around also, but um, uh, but anyway, these are using some turquoise effects. Um, this piece that we'll pass around, there's, there's two types of epoxy. The one on the end is called epoxy sculpt. The next one over is called magic smooth. And the epoxy sculpt is kind of like a Play-Doh type stuff. This is a, a thickened up, think of it as a thickened up five minute epoxy, although it takes a lot longer than five minutes for it to set up. Um, I use both of them, um, but I use them for different things. Um, this one will will pass pass these around and that'll give you an idea of what the the end goal is that um, that I'm trying to do. And then um, another thing that can be done with the epoxy sculpt is, this piece of um, box elder, when I turned it, it's it's been sitting around turned for a long time, and I never got around to finishing it because I hated this hard. Uh, this had a hard edge on this side too, and I hated the way it came up. And then I just had a hard edge on it. And so um, what I'll do on this is I've already filled in this side to make a bark like texture on it because this was just a flat plane like that is. This one, I will end up rounding this over uh, to make it more of this shape, and then I'll do the bark texture on it. And it can be done real quick and, and easy. And um, and then the finishing touch on, uh, on this to make it a little more believable is to, is just to do this, no. And that'll have to be toned down a little bit, but it'll give you an idea when this is passed around to just see what what is available and and what you can do with it. Um, the The other product that I'm going to demo is a uh, a woodworking industrial hot glue, and I found this stuff kind of by accident. It's used in the flooring industry for filling places on on floors so it's rated by the flooring industry as being durable enough to to use for that purpose it is real quick and easy to use um, it it requires a um, a little better hot glue machine or hot glue gun that I think it's about 450 degrees that it has to, to be and you definitely don't want to drop get a drop on you when you're working with it because you will say words and the dog is going to cower um, but it um, it works. It seems to work. I haven't used it a lot. I did use it to uh, to do this uh, plate. And this, when I started turning this plate, a uh, a gap kind of magically appeared in the center that I didn't didn't see. And this goes all the way through the plate. And so well, I was able to fill this gap uh, in pretty short order. And I'll demo that on how on how that's done. But um, I think it has possibilities for. For flat surfaces, uh, a curved surface is a little more of a problem with it. But um, I, like I say, I haven't played with it enough to know. It comes in a lot of different colors. It's uh, they have there's oak and a dark brown and a black and and uh, probably ten or fifteen other colors that the the company has. The the uh, glue sticks are a little expensive. Maybe I forgot what they are. Maybe two or three dollars a piece for the glue sticks um, and they do go a long ways but uh, um, but I think that's that's probably a viable um, uh, product as well they'll they will um, hand sanding works on it uh, I'm not such a big fan of, of motorized sanding on it because you get start getting heat and it, it yeah kind of causes a problem on it um, they seem to take a finish okay as far as putting a finish over. They're not going to work worth a darn with uh, walnut oil or something like that. You're not, not going to use it for, for that purpose. But for uh, any kind of polyurethane uh, 
finished, they're going to, uh, to be fine. Um, and then of, as far as some of the other products that I'm gonna go over here, there's, um, there's a company here called uh, Industrial Art Supply out of, um, they're in Minnesota. It's kind of a cool little catalog. It kind of reminds you of, you, you know, when, when you're a kid in a science class, because they have a lot of things that are, that are school oriented. But um, there's two or three things that I buy out of this catalog. And one of the things that I do get uh, that I use on occasion are powdered pigments and they're um, wherever I put them. Oh, here they are. They're, they're little, you can buy a little sample bag of these powdered pigments, pigments and all they are is they're, they're mortar dye, which is used for dyeing concrete. And you can buy mortar dye in 50 pound bags, but it's really difficult to find it in, in small quantities. And so you can get a little sampler kit of different colors and stuff for almost nothing. And it's, it's a really, really, it's, it's like tempera paint, but it's 10 times more concentrated than what, you know, what tempera paint is. So it, it works really well. Anything that you're wanting to, um, I've used it on wood glue before. I've used it on um, uh, a bunch of things other than epoxy in order to tint. And um, you can add it into polyester resin or Bondo and tint that as well. But uh, I'll pass that catalog around in case you want to, where, where were we starting here? And then uh, you can take this one too while you're at it. And there's a, um, a texture me supply catalog there also that they, uh, they carry these products, these epoxy products. You can find, you can probably find these online on Amazon or something as well. Um, or you can, I do know that you can go, this company, is made by AVES, A-V-E-S, and um, they do have a website where you can go on and order it direct from them as well. And they have little small containers that are maybe three or four ounces or something, which would last a long, long time. Uh, the good news about those products is they have a really long shelf life on it. They'll, they may firm up a little bit, but they'll, they'll um, oh, easily last a year and a half, two years on a container even the big containers. And the, um, this one in particular, the one that's the thicker version, um, you can make it last longer by just simply um, taking a little piece of sponge and putting water in it and then throwing it inside. And that seems to help keep it from, uh, from firming up. Um, both of these epoxy products will smooth with water, which is nice. You can simply dip your finger in water and you can smooth it out which makes it great for being able to kind of self-level something. Um, both of them are tentable and um, both are, are pretty sandable. They, they sand pretty well. The longer you let them dry, the better. Uh, neither one of these two, the, the epoxy sculpt, you could sand the same day, but on both of them, you're better off waiting until the next day to try to sand it. Um, on on any, any epoxies that I've found, the longer is always better on, on them uh, uh, firming up. Um, I'm going to use this stuff first, just so I can turn off that hot glue gun. And and uh, um, this this company makes a um, when you get on their website, uh, they have a couple of videos that will do a better job of demonstrating it than what I'm going to do here. But um, they have a couple of things that they sell along with their they have a kit that has the hot glue gun and the samples of those. And they come with an aluminum um, uh, bar. And they also come with a, um, a little hand plane to plane it because this stuff works really well if you trim it pretty quick after you put it in. If you let it get hard, then it gets, it's, so I've got the poor man's plane here that I'm gonna use. And, um, but this stuff is as simple as as well, let me cover up the bottom here. One thing I might mention that you do, I mean, purchase some of that magic. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people think Amazon has the best prices and everything. Mm -hmm. Amazon's like twice as 
Oh, are they? I didn't know that. I, I've never bought at any place other than uh, taxidermy supply catalog, so I, I never knew that. I'm glad you. I'm glad you did. And this, you just use an aluminum block to just press it down, and it just acts as a heat sink and just cools it really fast. And um, the thicker it is, the, the longer you're going to want to hold it or push it down. But I mean, it's already set up. And then oh, we do. Do we have an overhead here? Okay. And then just, just simply take it and just shave it off. And it's about that easy. This the. Uh, And then it could be uh, and that looks like it could stand a little more in there. The uh, the thicker it is, it does have a little bit of um, a little bit of shrinkage down, but you can add more over the top. I don't know how much I'll use this or even what I'll use it for, but it's it uh, it is kind of a neat product. And for certain things on on filling big cracks, um, I think it would be pretty handy. Well, is there any typical adherence to the wood, or does it just rely on the irregular surface? Well, hot hot glues, um, they have some industrial woodworking hot glues that oh, they'll they really bond well. And and this stuff is at a high enough temperature that I think it, it's it's doing a pretty good job of bonding. I haven't tried to to uh, take one of them apart to see, but I think it's bonding pretty good. But uh, you mean just as a filler, and then yeah, putting something yeah, above it. Uh, I don't know. I've never tried that. I'm I'm pretty new on this on this product, and I haven't. Uh, uh, that platter was the first thing that I tried it on, and then I tried it on a few little end cracks on something, and uh, so you can probably put it in a rough turn piece, and then after it's cured, turn it. I haven't tried turning it, so I don't I don't know. I on um i would think i would do all the repairs after you know after the piece is to final turned um rather than filling and then coming back and turning it i i don't know how well this stuff would uh would react to being turned i think the industrial um uh blue sticks or have a, a greater uh sure strength so you can use it for like blue block yeah yeah, when you get on, uh, if you do a, a hot glue search, there's one company in particular that I, uh, the name is, escapes me, but um, they had about 20 or 30 different kinds of hot glues, you know, that were um, were for really specific um, reasons. And there was probably six or eight of them that were just wood related um, for, for different things, but that's the limit of what I know on it. <laughs> I missed it. Where exactly did the idea for the aluminum block? Yeah, from the company that makes the glue sticks. Yeah, yeah. I never would have thought of it in a million years. But um, the uh, yeah, the company that sells the glue sticks um, de demonstrates that, and their little planer that they have is a, is a lot more user friendly than this. It's it's like a little block plane that has an edge, real flexible edge on the front, and they can just you know, just push it over and it, it seems to work really well. But I wanted to see if this stuff was going to work before I spent more money. But uh, the, these looks like, uh, they look like they could probably uh, cool down and add one more layer. But anyway, that'll give you, that'll give you a little bit of an idea of, of <clears throat> say what? I haven't, not, not on something like this, uh, on, um, 
I think you're going to be somewhat limited on that, on uh, where you're going to use it based on how you can plane it. Because if you have a hard inside curve, I think it's going to be difficult, even with the razor blade, you know, to get a nice uh, peel on it. And um, so I, other than the flat platter, I haven't used the stuff, but I just thought I'd, I would. Uh, oh, John, quick question. If you've got a curved surface talking about, can you, does it sand faster than wood or slower than wood? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't, I don't know. This stuff is, is softer, uh, is a little softer than what the wood is. Um, so I would think it would sand faster. But this, I did try to power sand this stuff. I wasn't a fan of that. Uh, hand sandings seem to work okay, um, but that's the limit of my knowledge on this. I just wanted to to uh, mention it because it is something new to, that I'm going to experiment around with a little bit more. Yo, don't know, don't know that answer either. <laughs> you're just <laughs> you're you're asking all the wrong questions. <laughs> the ones I don't have a clue about. <laughs> yes. No, I no no bubbles. It, the only thing that I've seen is on real thin, um, real thin applications. It seems to work fine. Something really thick like that, where I was filling a, a you know a half inch, it does seem to shrink. And um, uh, and so I think you, you really have to overfill it, you know, and then maybe come back a second time and do it a second time. Um, I did experiment with it. I had some really fine, um, I think maybe it was on that platter that, that's uh, passed around here, but some real fine um, uh, cracks on an edge and they weren't real conducive to using the hot glue gun to get it in there. So. I took some of the leftover pieces and then I just took my wood burner and used the wood burner to actually melt it and get it down inside the crack. And that worked really well for a really tight, you know, fine crack where I was trying to, to get it in. That seemed like that worked good. Um, okay, um, filling cracks and all this, of course, this is destined for the, um, uh, burn pile, but it was a good example of all the things that can go wrong, um, you know, splitting on both sides and knots in it. Um, this side uh, of it was filled with the epoxy sculpt, the thicker one, and I just added um, a little bit of um, powdered pigments to it to, to get it uh, a color that would work, and this will look different with, uh, with a finish on it. And then the inside of this um, gives you an idea of what it looks like before, you know, after I fill it. I don't worry about what's sticking up above, how much it is. I just want to try to make sure that the, the crack is completely clean uh, or completely filled with it. The next day when you're, when you're doing your sanding, you can take a, a file, you know, if it's in an area where you can actually get to and you can, you can hit and knock the the, you know, the top of it off with a file to where you don't have to sand the whole thing all the way down. But um, all right, the um, the epoxy sculpt you can mix with your fingers, which is kind of nice, and um, it works well with. Uh, this was warm water, but it's not warm anymore. Um, if you just drop it in some, you know, about as hot a water as you can get out of your tap and just, and just leave it for 30 seconds or something, it softens up really nice and becomes real pliable. I don't use, uh, gloves when I'm mixing this stuff. Um, and I've used this stuff for 40 years and I haven't noticed that it's done, that does anything, but. You know, it, it doesn't seem to bother me. So, um, but if you're worried about it, use gloves. I, the reason why I don't wear gloves is usually when I'm mixing this stuff, 
I have a, uh, um, a work sink and I just turn the water on warm, extra warm, and I just mix it under the water and, and it's washing everything off as it goes and, uh, and makes it real soft and pliable. And so, you know, it just turns into, turns into putty with a little bit of mixing. Um, the thing that is nice about this, uh, this, this product is real similar to the commercial product milliput um you know which is what is that in france that you did a demo on it didn't you uh, did you do a demo on milliput oh okay okay england yeah yeah um and it's it seems to me like this is a real similar uh product to that um this would work fine if you're if you're turning a you know if you if you had some grooves in the side of a bowl or something and you decided you wanted to fill them up and make colored bands, you could use opaque, you could use acrylic paints or the powders, either one, any, any colors that you want and simply fill that and then sand it and you would end up with colored bands going around a, a, a hollow form or a bowl, either one. Um, you can use any kind of acrylic paint that'll work for uh, for tinting it. You can uh, you can also use um, these powders, and it takes hardly almost nothing on these to uh, to tint it. These uh, <laughs> my orange broke open and uh, and colored the bags on all of them. I have. I've had lots of practice with this stuff. Um, but the the biggest problem, obviously, is if you're trying to color match, um, you know, get as close as you can um, to either the wood color or if you're just trying to get a real dark, um, real dark brown or something like on that big hollow form there or that not that big hollow form, but that hollow form. Um, if you're trying to um, make a dark brown, you, you might have to play with it just a little bit to get it the color that you... Let's turn it in a little more brown, uh, cocoa brown. If you were shooting for a, an oak coloration or something, or something that's a little bit lighter, uh, you can go the other way and This stuff will um, start to get firm in, oh, 30 minutes or so, 30, 40 minutes. And then it'll, it'll dry in a couple of hours. Um, and, um, and it says it's sandable the same day. But uh, again, I think you're better off just waiting. This is a good time to wear gloves here if you're mixing color in it, by the way. <laughs> you, you've working with walnuts. Yeah. Does that stuff shrink much, Don? No, and that's the good news is it doesn't it doesn't shrink hardly at all. It you put it in and it just kind of stays put, and uh, it, uh, I would say virtually no shrinkage on it. Um, I I used to do lots and lots of uh, wood carvings, fish wood carvings, and use this a lot way back then um, uh, for uh, for repairs and 
in different things. And uh, okay, this um, this oak bowl has lots of little uh, from the burl or whatever you want to call these. There's lots of little openings here on this on the inside. They go all the way through from the inside and the out. But to fix them, I did put one coat of um, of shellac on this. It it works a little better if you get a first coat of finish on it, uh, simply because um, the pigment that you've added to this won't stain the wood around it. You can sand down past it, but it's just it just makes life a little easier if you. Uh, if you have a coat of finish first. Yeah, sanding sealer would be would be great, you bet. This this stuff does um, sand easier than most of the wood that you're going to use, so you'll sand it away without any problem um, if it's if it's a little bit proud here of the surface when when it sets up my head annoy hey Don tell Yo. me the name of this product again uh, this one is epoxy sculpt yep this is the one that's a little thicker um, and using um, particularly using these mortar dyes, you could make this product, you know, bright orange or bright yellow or bright green or bright blue, uh, real, real easily using uh, mortar dyes if you were doing some banding or something. Don, you have two containers there, but it is a single. It's what? It's not something you mix. What did you do? Yeah, there's an A and a B to that. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm glad, good, good question. There is an A and a B to this product. And you simply um, use equal amounts of each and then just knead them together. That looks like it'd be a lot more pliable than the other guy. I haven't used, uh, I've seen Milliput, but I've never used it. And uh, the, um, the thing I really like about this product is is just the fact that if you um, mix it in warm water, it becomes really soft. It makes it it's really easy to mix up, and then once it's mixed up, it's soft, and so it, it goes down into the into a crevice real easily. It, it'll take a finish fine. It won't take a stain, but yeah, it'll. No, there's no problem putting the finish over the top of it. Um, this is the product that, that all I did was uh, fish taxidermy, but this is the product that every piece of taxidermy that you will, will ever see, they, this is what they use for the finish work around eyes and setting eyes on fish and uh, blending in fins, you know, on the on the bases and that sort of thing. Um, it just has a really good history of, um, of staying where it needs to stay and uh, and not splitting and cracking. And uh, it's just pretty, it's about as close to being bulletproof as anything I know. Well, it's uh, it's more fun than CA. <laughs> yeah. I'm not I'm not a big fan of CA, um, and uh, for crack filling. But uh, I mean, there's a lot of little uh, a lot of little pits and pores on this, and as you you can tell, it doesn't take very long. And I'll bring, I'll try to remember to go ahead and finish and bring this piece to the. The next meeting.
How long does it take to dry? It takes, um, uh, it starts to get too firm to use in about a half an hour, 45 minutes. Um, it's pretty well dry, dry in a couple hours. Um, no, no, there's, there's no bringing it back. If you used a color you don't like, you're all, you just need to turn something new. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could grind it out, but anyway, that's, that's, uh, really ugly at this stage, but, um, tomorrow that'll sand out real easily and uh won't be any problem at all to to uh to do they do yeah because this this um um using a little modeling tool or something like that you can really push it down in and if you have a real um, thin, long crack, like when uh, when I was filling this one, um, well, this this hasn't been uh, sanded at all. It's just a raw crack. But um, when I filled this crack or filled the crack on the other side, I basically just did this. And then just took a a long pin and kind of worked it down into the crack to make sure that I was pushing it down in as far into the crack as I can and just keep pushing it in until it doesn't take anymore. Is it just a gap filler or is it also adhere? It adheres, yeah. It's it's it fills the gap and it does adhere really well. Um, I don't see any problem with it. I mean, I, um, that's a loaded question, you know, about any, I think about anything when it's cured is probably food safe, but, um, everybody kind of dodges around that, um, that cause they don't want to get caught on it, but, um, Okay. Yeah, this, um, these are little Harbor Freight, you know, six, six tools for two or three dollars. And, uh, it, it's a really handy little spatula. And, uh, I have several of these and, um, have a couple that I, heat up with a torch and just bend them at an angle to where it makes it easier to get down, you know, and into the bottom of something. And these work real well. Okay. Any questions about the epoxy sculpt? Yeah. So untinted, does it stay pretty clear once it's there in front of you? Is that great? Yeah. Yeah. Untinted, that's, that's, uh, it's going to dry pretty close to that. Now, I, I can't say that I've ever stained it, uh, but I don't, it's not real porous. So I, I really don't think it's gonna, um, I don't think it's gonna stain very well. I think if you're doing a piece that you were wanting to stain, you'd be better off to stain and then try to match the color as close as you can with uh, with the filler and go the, go the other way around. You can embed grit within, within it though. Embed what? Grit, it's like ground up, really finely ground up glass different colors uh i'm sure you could now on this one with it being opaque i don't know if you um the if you're going to do that this other epoxy would probably work a little better the one that's trans a little more translucent yeah. so um this this one is mainly just uh used for any kind of filler that you want to uh that you can get away with it being trans uh, <coughs> opaque Dyes or is it just the oh good I'm glad you brought that up yes it does you can use um, uh, you can use acrylic paint you can use um, at um, 
Woodcraft and um, Rockler, you know, they make these little uh, dyes. These are real super concentrated and these work real well too. You can, um, we'll, do a, we'll do a blue one here real quick and see. Yes, it's real sandable. Yeah, sense. Excuse me? Yeah, I know. Yeah, this is, uh, I think that is what this is intended for. Well, this is called, this is a tinting paste. They have a, a trans tint. Um, this is this powdered stuff that you, you add uh, water or solvent to, but uh, this is just a, a tint for whatever purpose. But I did get that at Rockler a week or two ago. But, you know, as you can, as you can tell, you can, make a pretty bright color with it. And if you don't like that, you can make it green, I guess. So the Greenwood Germans. Yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty bright green. Okay. The, uh, the other product called Magic Smooth. And um, it is a, a two-part epoxy. Again, um, use about the same amount of each. And you will have to use... Uh, a trowel or something to kind of mix this one up. And um, these two epoxies will actually work together. And there's been um, some things business related with that I've uh, actually mixed these two 50-50, mix up a batch of this and mix up a batch of this. And then um, it, it doesn't have to be 50-50. It can be any, it can be any uh, percentage that you want. But if I take 10% um, of this and add it to that, it'll make this a lot thinner, a lot easier. It smooths out with water a lot easier. And there were a lot of applications where I needed to use a lot of epoxy and this stuff is a little difficult to smooth out in a big area if you're you know doing something this big and get it all perfectly smooth if you mix up some of this and you add a little bit of that to it and dip your fingers in water it'll just smooth like glass and it'll it'll uh, um, smooth out really nice i don't know what application that has to do with uh with what we do on wood turning but it might um if the, this is slower, yeah. This is this really. Um, um, this is not sandable quite as quick. It, it you can sand it the next day, but a two or three days is way better on on this one than uh, than with that one. So uh, you have about the same amount of working open time, uh, forty five minutes or something of open time before this starts, and your batch size too. The bigger the batch, the the quicker it sets up. So if you mixed up a big glob of this stuff this big, you have less working time. So does it, get hot? Uh, yeah. it, it warms up. Yeah, it doesn't get hot, hot, but it does warm up. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is sensitive to that. A lot of the urethanes and and um, uh, urethanes are real bad about that. But uh, even epoxy, same way, the bigger the batch of epoxy that you mix up. If it's in a cup or something, um, it, it does get hot faster, so or start to kick off faster. Um, this product is the what I use to make kind of the turquoise type filler, and the way that uh, I did that was adding some color to it, 
And then I discovered this inlay at also at Rockler. I'll pass this little bag around. Um, but um, it's uh, opal. I assume it's it's a uh, poor man's opal. But it's uh, it it has uh, it, it is some really nice chunks of material. And I don't I don't use hardly any of this to get the effect. Um, I'll just leave this out. If anybody's interested, it'll be up here when the, when it's over. But um, on dark woods, like this piece here in particular, this little hollow form, um, I think dark woods lend themselves real well to the that blue-green turquoise type look. About everybody that does mesquite, you know, fills their cracks and holes and, you know, uses a tur ground up turquoise in order to do it. And so um, this type of epoxy, um, you can get that same effect from, and it's and it's a lot easier and quicker to do. So this this piece, I'll finish it before the next uh, the next uh, show and or the next meeting, and uh, and use this method on it. But you can use any kind of uh, iridescent powders. This is just a turquoise pearlex powder. Uh, the same stuff that they use for making the river, you know, river epoxy tables that are kind of the rage right now. Um, I have not. Yeah, I have not turned it. Um, so I, I imagine it'll turn about like any kind of epoxy wood or, or uh, urethane, uh, probably a little chippy and you just have to be slow, go slow and not get too aggressive on it. To, uh, to fill something like that, Okay, you can you can get it in there, and it's particularly if you have put sanding sealer or um, or some other finish on for your first coat, then you can get away with eliminating a lot of your sanding just by doing that. And then if you are we showing up here, then this stuff. All you have to do is pick up two or three pieces of this opal, and with a little bit of glue on your end, it'll they'll just stick. You just lay them on top. Huh? I just lay them on top, and then I press them in. So I'm just laying however much of that stuff you want, and it doesn't take it doesn't take much, and then just press it in. And then when you sand it, it'll give the effect of that, the one that, that we passed around there. Question is, do you think you can make that thin enough that you can put it in a disposable syringe? I just, because you got a bunch of stuff to 
I think you could probably a bigger syringe. I think yeah. you could probably push this out of a, a bigger syringe. Yeah, I, th I think that would be doable. Um, yeah, I, I think that would maybe you you have to have something with a pretty good throttle size on it. But um, I've done a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of epoxies where um, I clean out a actually used to buy the uh, paint caulking tubes. Um, you could buy them without anything in them, but if you're back before caulking was four dollars a tube, I'd just buy a, a you know, a, a thing of, of caulk and and shoot all of it out and get rid of it, and then take a air nozzle and blow the cap back out, and then wash out the tube, and then put in whatever kind of epoxy I wanted, and then just had a, you know, squeeze grip, and you could, you know, if you had a really big project or something, you could certainly do that with, but the syringe would probably work just fine. And then um, this, let's see, where are those? Oh, these are, they're back here. And this, this stuff, you can play around a little bit with it um, by kind of intermixing some colors too as you go. Just You can um, fill up a hole with whatever colors. You know, I'll add a little bit of this just for the heck of it. How are we doing on time? Okay. Can you send that stuff, John? Like, can what? Can you send it out? If uh, not, not really on this stuff. I don't know. I don't know of anything that you could really use on this to to thin it. Mm -hmm. um, If you had a if you had a project that you were wanting to do opaque colors on rather than you know the translucent uh, type stuff, there is a a third uh, type of epoxy that I brought, and that is this stuff. And this is essentially a thinner version of that. It's it's uh, if you mix that stuff up and you put it in here, it would kind of self level. Okay. Um, it, it's it's thicker than five minute epoxy, but it's it it will uh, uh, it wouldn't work very good on a curved surface if you're trying to keep it in place. But for something like you're talking about, if you're trying to shoot it into a a spot, it would probably work fine for that. And on that, all I did to get a little bit different look was I used some of the blue. I added some of the, even though this looks kind of milky white, this will turn more of a opaque clear when it when it actually uh, uh, cures, and kind of an amber uh, uh, amber opaque. And um, so by mixing those two colors, and then I reached over and I just grabbed a little tiny bit of this blue and just mix that in. It gave a little bit different look than what the first one has, a little brighter colors. Oops. So anyway, you can, you know, it's, you can play around with it and, and there's, it has a lot of possibilities, I think. Um, I could talk longer, but I'm not going to, unless you all have questions. <laughs> Yes. For your uh, setup there, you know, the you're working on, is that uh, like glass paper? Glass sort of oh, this? Yeah. No, it's just a piece of, um, I have a roll of 
real wide uh, packing tape, and I just I just take a piece of that and put it on a piece of cardboard to have something. You you are going to want to mix this on something other than um, just plain cardboard because the water, you know, the cardboard's going to soak up the water or the moisture out of that. So just get a piece of packing tape or something or a, um, an old glass dish works fine, a piece of flexible plastic, a, a lid off a Cool Whip container. Those work great. Just anything like that to, to mix it up on. It, uh, no, it washes up fine, um, even though it doesn't look like it here. It, it'll, it'll wash up fine with just soap and water. And most of what I have here is just the pigments, the dry pigments that, oh, I do know there's something that I forgot that I'll show real quick. If I was going to fix this bark, um, this, this piece, I am going to, um, Go ahead and grind off these hard corners and make this rounded like this. So I want to make the the bark, you know, continue all the way up and around. And we've all done natural edge things um, where it's, you try to be careful and you lose a piece of bark and, you know, you can spend the next two days on your floor trying to find it. You'll never find the piece of bark. Well, this this is one way of kind of trying to restore that. And um and make it to where it's it's usable because you could do a, a pretty good size section of, of bark with this pretty quick. Um, I have I haven't used it with this before. I have used it on other things. Um, I've never added it to this, and but it might work just fine. This stuff will dry slightly darker than what you're seeing color wise so when you're mixing it kind of keep that in mind that um, however dark you are it's probably going to end up just a, another shade darker once the stuff sets up and dries have you have you ever turned it, or is this another another thing where you you do it after you're done turning I do it after, yeah. I do it after. I haven't, I haven't turned any of this stuff, so I don't know. I don't know how it would be uh, turning it. But um, I wanted to do this just to give you an idea of time-wise, um, how quick it can go. Obviously, you want to play around a little bit to try to get your your uh, color as close as possible. Is this magic glue you're using? This is magic, or no? This is epoxy sculpt here. This is the the one that's more like a dough, a wood dough. So you can do something like that, get it on there rough. Um, you can use something as simple as a as a piece of styrofoam because it has varying texture on it, and use the edges off of a off of that to kind of uh, get a texture going. It's a long time, um, a year more easily, and they make the they make some little. You're going to want to order the small containers of it. It's just a, about that much, but it'll it'll last a long, long time. Oh, 
There, there, yes, all of them are A and B, an equal amount of each. And it's, it's not critical. You don't have to weigh it or anything like that. Just uh, just eyeball it and uh, and get it close. Anyway. I'll I'll play with this a little bit while we take a break, but it, it in general you can see it doesn't take long to get a pretty close uh, shape and texture on it, and this this product in particular, if you um, the more you work with it, particularly with water, the softer it gets, and so the best thing you can do on this uh, sometimes is get it kind of roughed in, and then just set the timer on your phone for ten minutes. And come back in ten minutes, and it'll it'll firm back up, and it'll it'll work a lot easier when you're starting to put some kind of rough type detail on it like that, because you you uh, it won't just push and mush around with whatever tool you're using, and then maybe set it for another five minutes and come back again, and you can get uh, quite a bit of different uh, uh, yeah effects on it based on what tools you're using, and on your when you get your coloration close, you know, obviously after this is finished and dried, uh, I can come back with a little bit of acrylic paints. Um, Joe Sonia brand of acrylic paints, um, they, the, the, that, which I don't have with me, but they make a uh, acrylic paints that dry matte finish. They're just absolutely flat, dull, no sheen to them whatsoever. And, um, uh, and they work really well on something like this where you want a, a dry look. You don't want a, a, a gloss to it. So you can come back and do a little bit of finish painting you want if you want. Or uh, these are oil, oil paint sticks that they make in different colors. And um, I've used these for a lot of different things. And you can just simply rub it on your finger and push it to get. It's just going to hit the highlights on there. And if you do something like that and take a little wash of acrylic, you can you can get it real close. But any any place where bark is missing, you could do a real easy fix on this piece in you know half an hour or something. So anyway, that's all I've got. Not that anybody can't hear me anyway, but uh, thank you, Don. Uh, all interesting, all new products to me. So I'm sure a lot of people, it's new to them too. But uh, fun to see the different techniques. Um, we're going to take a little break.